Hi, everyone. Pursuant to Republic Act 11058 and its implementing rules and regulations, the Dolly Department Order 198 Series of 2018, private establishments are mandated to submit occupational safety and health reports. So, meron tayo mga iba't ibang reports na kailangan submit ng mga privado sector. Now, one of this report is your annual work accident illness exposure data report. And it should be submitted to the Department of Labor and Employment who have jurisdiction over your workplace um, on or before the 30th day of the month following the end of each calendar year. So that will be on or before the 30th of January. Example, uh, for year 2021, from uh, January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2021, that covered year, ang report natin for your AEDR should be submitted on or before the 30th of January 2022. Yeah. So sa video na ito, pag-usapan po natin kung paano if you fill up yung form. So kung wala pa po kayong form, wala pang available, uh, hindi pa kayo naka-download ng form, okay, you can go ahead and search on the web. Okay. So here, pwede natin i-download from the Bureau of Working Conditions, the website. So you can just search for Bureau of Working Conditions, OSH forms. So dito, uh, downloadable forms. So here, you will be able to see, so marami po tayong mga forms and templates dito, mga uh, pwede natin i-download. Then here, you just choose for the safety and health. Okay, so hanapin natin yung, yung annual exposure data report na form. So here, reportorial requirements. So dito po yung annual, annual work accident illness exposure data report. So all you have to do is you have to download this. So if you can convert it into a word format para madali po ang pag-edit, much better. So in my case, I have downloaded it in PDF. So uh, I'll be Okay, I'll be sharing with you the PDF copy that I have downloaded already. Okay, here. So here we can edit this. Okay. So this is the form dollar bwc slash ohsd slash ip dash 6b. So this is the form. So here you're going to fill up information. So date, okay, so date you're going to accomplish the AEDR. So it should not be later than January 30 follow uh following year. For example, if we're going to do this report and the covered period is January uh, to December 2021, so this should not be later than January 30, 2022. Example, alagyan natin, we're doing this report on January 15, 2022. Example. Okay, so here you're going to put the name of your company or establishment as it appears on your DPI registration or your SEC registration or your CDA or if not your, uh, uh, the name in your business permit as well, okay? So kung ano nakalagay doon, example, the company name is ABC Company. You write it there. Then nature of business, so kung ano yung nature of business, example here, uh, nature of business is construction. Then here, you're going to put the address, okay? What is the address of this company, of ABC company? Example, it is located in Tipolo. Okay, Tipolo, Mandawa City, Mandawa City, Cebu. Okay, so this is an example. Then we have here for your exposure data. Now here, this is the covered period. So we're talking about year 2021 here. You can crush out 19. So here, you're going to input the number of employees. Ilang number of, of employees ba meron sa company ninyo? So this one, irregardless on the status of the employee. So kung meron tayo mga contractuals, you have to include those contractuals or probationary status ng worker kasama po dito. So example, we have 100 workers. 
So 100 workers, then here you have to compute or you have to give the information on the total hours worked by all employees during the year. So in that year, ilang oras ba lahat-lahat nagtabaho yung mga workers natin? So how are you going to determine the employee hours of exposure at the total number of hours? Of course, you have from your compensation and benefits perhaps, or sa HR ninyo, may data doon. Siyempre, silang gumagawa ng payroll. Okay, so you can get your actual uh, work hours from there. So, but of course, kung wala tayong uh, actual, kung wala tayong data talaga na, na makukuha, wala sa HR, wala sa compensation and benefits, for example, you can also, instead of using the actual exposure hours, pwede din natin i-estimate. Okay, so pwede din i-estimate. Yung actual exposure hours po natin, or, or yung total work hours, uh, ito yung... Uh, number of hours of exposure if possible no actual ang gagamitin natin this should be taken from the payroll or time clock records and shall include only the actual straight time hours worked and actual overtime hours worked ayun so yun actual natin next if you do not have that actual exposure hours or worked hours you can estimate as i mentioned earlier so estimated hours it is, our, it is the hours of exposure which are not available, so estimated hours may be used. So such estimated hours should be obtained by multiplying the total employee days to work for the period by the average number of hours to work per day. So if the hours work per day vary among departments, a separate estimate should be made for each department. And these estimates added to obtain the total hours. Estimates for overtime hours shall also be included in the computation. So, yun yung pwede natin gawin. So, example, so kung wala tayong actual, no? So, sabi natin, we have 100 workers. So, kung meron tayong 100 workers and they have been working um, 8 hours per day, so 8 hours lang, walang overtime, for example, and they are working uh, 5 days a week, and they have worked 50 weeks in a year for 2021, for example. So we are going to multiply that. So 100 workers times 8 hours working per day, and then we have 5 days, so times 5, 5 days per week, times 50 weeks per year. So this will give you the total hours worked by all employees during the year. So that will give us an answer of 200,000. So you write down here your 200,000. So yan yung total hours worked by all employees for year 20. 2021. So here in the summary, you have to write down the total uh, disabling injuries or illnesses. So ilan ba yung disabling injuries and illnesses? So ano bang ibig sabihin ng disab disabling injuries or illnesses? So meron tayong a definition of term dito. So na-define natin yan. So disabling injuries, these are work injuries which result in death, penal uh, Permanent total disability, permanent partial disability, or temporary total disability. So, yung temporary total disability, ito yung mga uh, cases wherein the worker have met an accident, nagkaroon si worker ng injury or illness, na hindi si worker nakabalik sa kanyang established job on the same day. So, or the following day na absent si worker. So, yun. So, hindi nakabalik si worker agad-agad dulot ng pagkakaroon ng injury or illness. So, that is considered as a disabling injury. Of course, kasama yung death. Kung meron namatay na worker, meron nagkaroon ng permanent total disability, or meron nagkaroon ng permanent partial disability. Yung non-disabling injuries naman, as defined here, these are medical treatment or uh, first aid cases only. So injuries which do not result in disabling injuries but required first aid or medical attention of any kind. So this one, nagkaroon si worker ng injury or nagkaroon ng illness si worker but he was able to go back to his established job on the same day or the following day. Okay, so hindi siya nag-absent the following day. So, that is considered as non-disabling injuries. Else, kung uh, hindi siya nakabalik, 
that will be temporary total disability kung nag-absence yung worker ng isang araw, kahit isang araw lang. No? Okay, so for example, for that year, meron tayong dalawang aksidente nangyari. Okay, so lagyan natin dito. So we have two. Then here, for example, uh, total number of non-disabling injuries. So ilan yung mga first aid cases lang. So usually, ito yung mga small lacerations, small cuts. Okay, kailangan first aid treatment lang. So lagyan natin, for example, five. Okay, five. So dito, this is the frequency rate. Itong frequency rate, you have to compute for this. This is actually a measurement of your performance, no? Performance in terms of occupational safety and health in the workplace. So you have to compute for the frequency rate and you have to compute for the severity rate. Now here, we have the formula for that. Uh, when you say frequency rate, that is the total number of disabling injuries per million employee hours of exposure. So, yung ano natin, reference point natin is per million employee hours of exposure. So, here, this is the formula for your frequency rate. Total number of disabling injuries times 1 million divided by employee hours of exposure. So, employee hours of exposure is somewhat the same as your total number of workers. Okay? So, here, sabi dito, ano formula? total number of disabling injuries. So see, there's no need to include in the computation the total non-disabling injuries. Okay? So hindi kailangan isama because the formula for frequency rate is just the total number of disabling injuries in which in this case, ang total disabling injuries natin ay 2. So you have to put that. So I'm not going to put yet the, the answer on the frequency rate. So for example, we're going to compute for this one. Okay, so we have two worker, two, uh, not worker, two disabling injuries. So you have to multiply this by 1 million. Okay, so 1 million. 1 million. And you have to divide it by the hours of exposure, which is 200,000 in this case. So 200,000, that will give us an answer. Let me just compute for that. Okay, so 2 times 1 million, and you have to divide it by 200,000. That will give us an answer of 10. Okay, so 10. But of course, you're not going to show your solution here. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. So our frequency rate, okay, the frequency rate is 10. Okay, so meaning to say, meron tayong um, 10 disabling injuries or illness for every 1 million uh, man hours or work hours. Then, let's proceed with computing for severity rate. By the way, meron na po tayo nagawa na a video also on how to compute for the frequency rate and severity rate. Mas in detail po yun, so you can refer or I can, sh I, I can share you the link later on for that, so you can check it out. Meron po tayong uh, mga sample computation done for your frequency rate and severity rate. Kasi hindi lang po kinoconsider yung total number of days lost when we talk about um, severity rate. For example, dito, yung severity rate natin, okay, ang definition of severity rate is the total number of days lost or charged. Okay, so or charged or the total. Okay, so isa sum up natin yung days lost, pati yung charged, for example. So, per million employee are sub-exposure pa rin. So, yun yung reference point natin per 1 million employee are sub-exposure. Kaya meron tayong factor of 1 million na nailalagay dyan. Okay, so here, the, the formula for your severity rate is the total number of days lost or charged times 1 million. Or it could be the total number of days lost plus charged. Okay, so kasi when are you going to use the table of charges? So... Or when are you not going to use the, the actual number of days lost? Okay? Kapag ito yung mga accident or injury that involves uh, permanent total disability. Okay? So for example, nagkaroon ng uh, amputation. So pag ito mga injury ang nangyari, kahit nasabihin natin si worker ay nag-absent ng 3 days for example. 
hindi po yun ang i-consider natin. Okay? So, we have to refer to the number of days uh, charged. Yun, may charges tayo. For example, kung merong namatay, death, instead of, uh, wala namang number of days kapag namatay, di ba? So, ang charge po natin sa death is 6,000 days lost. So, same thing with other disability, mga amputation, okay, cuts, kapag naputol yung mga daliri natin or yung mga paa natin, kamay, okay? So, basta any, meron mga amputations, you're not going to use the actual uh, days na na absence worker or days loss, but we're going to use the number of days or yung charges natin. Okay? So, meron po tayong table of charges. So, makikita nyo po yan sa occupational safety health standard natin. So, yun. So, but for, of course, for this particular uh, example natin for our computation, so, ilan ba yung total disabling injuries dito? Dalawa. So, you have to look into your record kasi hindi dito na ilalagay, no? Hindi nire-require ng, ng, sa report na ito kung ilang number of days ang na-absence your worker or ilang days na na-charge for that particular injury or illness. So, example, example, yung is first injury natin is five days na-absence your worker. Second injury, five days din na-absence your worker. So, ilan yung total number of days lost natin. So, definitely, that will be 5 plus 5 and that will give us 10. So, if we're going to compute for the severity rate, so, sabi dito, that will be number of days lost times 1 million. Okay, times 1 million. And you have to divide it by the number of hours of exposure. So, that is the same, which is 200,000. And that will give us an answer of 50. Okay? So, 50 ang sagot dito. So, you have to write here, your severity rate is 50. So, meaning to say, there's a possibility na uh, ito yung ano natin, performance natin, for every 1 million hours of exposure, uh, meron tayong 50 days lost. Okay? That is for your severity rate. And um, of course, dito, we have to write down the name of the general manager or the um, highest ranking authority in your establishment, your company. For example, the owner could be, okay, so you write it down here, the name, for example, Juan de la Cruz. Let's make sure that he will sign this, okay? So this is how you accomplish your annual exposure data report or your AEDR, which should be submitted on or before the 30th of January following the calendar year or the covered period. Okay, so hopefully we were able to assist you and we were able to inform you, give you knowledge and idea on how to accomplish your annual exposure data report. So thank you and keep safe, everybody.